The Life of Riley, starring William Bendix. Last week, Chester Riley's son, Junior, came home with some wonderful news. During the night, there'd been a small fire in his school, and now it's to be closed one week for repairs. So, Junior and his pal, Egbert Gillis, decided to take advantage of the holiday by going to a Boy Scout camp near Lake Arrowhead. News of this decision soon reached the ears of their doting fathers, and Riley Sr. said, I absolutely forbid it. Now, I don't want no arguments, Junior. It's time you learned that there's somebody at the head of this house... And the head of this house says you can't go. And I agree with your mother. <laughs> and in the house next door, Egbert Gillis' father said... Egbert, I absolutely forbid it. Now, it's no use pestering me. Yesterday I forbid it. Today I forbid it. And if you ask me tomorrow, I'll forbid it again. <laughs> but teenage boys are persistent. And then Riley Sr. said... Please don't go, Junior. I'll miss you. I see so little of you. I thought this next week we could pal around together, so, so don't go. I- I'll double your allowance. I'll triple it. I'll quadruple it. Just think, Junior, 40 cents a week. <laughs> next door, Gillis said, Egg boy, egg boy, sweetheart. You don't want to leave your papa. Look, if you stay, I'll buy you a nice present, something you'll need. I'll get you a brand new lawnmower. <laughs> boys were stubborn, so finally each father had to put his foot down. I don't care what your mother says. You can't go, Junior, and that's final. My head's made up. <laughs> it's no use begging, Egg Boy. I said you can't go, and nothing will make me change my mind. Goodbye, Junior. Goodbye, Egg Boy. Goodbye, Junior. Goodbye, Egg Boy. Goodbye. 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 Uh, that ain't all, Gillis. Yeah. They couldn't wait for the bus to pull out. Fine sons we got. They get a week's vacation instead of staying home where they can spend a little time with their fathers for a change, they rush off. Yeah. And where did they go? Uh, to some wilderness where there's nothing to look at but some weasels, coyotes, and skunks. Boy, we certainly must be repulsive. <laughs> you know, this ain't our fault, Riley. It's this young generation. They're ungrateful. Pure, adulterated ungrates. Yeah, after all we've done for them. Remember when the cop come to arrest them for stealing a donut from Dingle's Bakery? Who swore they were innocent? I did. Who ate up all the evidence? I did. <laughs> I don't know. When we was kids, we loved our fathers. I always thought of my father as an idol. Mine never worked neither. <laughs> But I loved him just the same. Everywhere my father went, I wanted to go. Me too. He used to take me to all the ball games. Every game we would hit together. He'd sell the hot dogs and I'd smear on the mustard. <laughs> Believe me, Riley, nowadays being a father is only green set. You give birth to a son, you feed him, you clothe him, you educate him. And in the end, what do you got? An empty room. <laughs> That's until he gets married. Then the room gets crowded. Our kids have got to be taught a lesson. They got to learn you don't get something for nothing. If you want love, you got to give love. You're right. Love breeds love. Well, we'll show those kids. They want to go, let them. It won't bother us none. We'll show them we don't care. We won't even write for them. You'll bet. Besides, with them growing, who will we get the right for us? <laughs> yes, sir, Gillis. We'll show them. Yeah, the only thing is, I know you, Riley. You'll get soft. You'll crack. Not me. No, no, not this time. If anybody cracks, it'll be you. When it comes to Egbert, you always were a softy. Oh, me? Yeah, you. Just yesterday, you took a sirloin steak that was for your dinner, a dollar a pound, and you put it on Egbert's black eye. Well, it was only fair. After all, I gave him the black eye. <laughs> he walked into a door I was opening. But don't you worry about me. Okay. From now on, no sentiment. We're making a pact. It's a pact. For the next week, them boys don't exist. We're cutting them down from our family tree. Right. And then when they've learned their lesson, we'll hang them up again. <laughs> Riley, is that all you're going to eat? I ain't hungry, Dumpling. What's the matter with you anyway? You've been mooning around all day. You won't eat, you won't talk. 
Why are you in such an ugly mood? I ain't no ugly mood. Don't judge by my face. <laughs> Inside, I feel swell. Oh, you don't fool me. I know what's bothering you. You miss Junior. I do not. Why should I miss him? The minute he left, I put him out of my mind, just like that. Never gave him another thought. Two days, 12 hours, and eight minutes since he left. <laughs> he hasn't written yet. Oh, so you do miss him. Well, what's wrong with that? After all, he's been with us 13 years now. <laughs> Ever since he was born. I grew up with him. And he's such a fine boy. The least he can do is drop a line to show that he remembers he's got a father. Oh, Riley, be sensible. After all, he's my boy, too. I love him and I miss him. But I don't get all upset just because he's away for a few days. Oh, you can talk like that. You've never been a father. <laughs> You didn't go through what I went through when he was born. Well, and I thought I heard everything. Just don't care about me. After all, how long does it take to write a six-page letter? Never, never mind a letter, a postal card. Two words. Send money. <laughs> you don't even have to sign it. I'd know it was from him. <laughs> Riley, I know you're very fond of Junior, but don't forget you've got another child. Oh, why, Riley! Oh, Babs. Uh, yeah, yeah, Babs. Uh, well, Babs, he's a sweet girl. But... You know, you've always been closer to Junior than you've been to Babs. Well, now's your chance to get to know her better. Gee, I, I love Babs, but... Well, she's not like Junior. When we play catch, she throws the ball like a girl. <laughs> and if we went fishing, would she put the worms on my hook like Junior does? Oh, Riley. Of course she throws a ball like a girl. That's because she is a girl. Well, yeah, that could be the reason. <laughs> Girls need a father's companionship as much as boys. You ought to show some interest in the things that interest Bab. Go on, talk to her. It'll cheer you up. Yeah. Yeah, why not? Well, what if Junior is going? I can get along without him. I got my little pants. Oh, well, uh, Babs. Babsy. In here, Daddy. Uh, hello, Babsy. Uh, mind if I sit down? Of course not, Daddy. Oh, wait, wait, I'll move these magazines. Oh, yeah. Well, I, uh, I, I just thought I'd drop in and have a friendly little talk. All right, Daddy. Let's talk. Well, uh... Well, uh... <laughs> Excuse me. Hey. Hmm? What is it? What will I talk about? For heaven's sake, talk about anything. Talk about school. School. That's it, school. Well, tell me, Babs, how's school? Fine. <laughs> well, that one's shot. Um, anything special on your mind, Daddy? Oh, no, no, nothing at all. My mind's a perfect blank. <laughs> I, I, I just wanted to talk. I, 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 uh, well, what's that you're reading there, honey? Oh, just a fashion magazine. Well, let me see. Oh. Yeah, yeah, I've seen it around. Harper's Buzzer. Uh, uh, bizarre, Daddy. It's mostly about women's clothes. You wouldn't care about that. No, 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 I do. Tell me all about it. Oh, they've got two of the most gorgeous dresses you've ever seen. Oh, they're divine. Well, tell me more. I'm all ears. Uh, well, I can't make up my mind which I like best. This one here is a taffeta with a sweetheart neck and a dirndl skirt. Adorable. <laughs> but this one's a file dress with a bustle back, leg of mutton sleeve, and a cowl neck. Which one do you like? Well, let me see. Right there. Yeah. Well, you'd look beautiful with mutton legs and a cow's neck. <laughs> well, I, I think I'd like to see you in this one here. You would? Yeah. This, oh, this... Daddy, you're an angel. It's only thirty dollars, but I never now, wait a minute, Bad. I didn't. I didn't oh, mean. Not just a minute, Bad. Oh, you're an angel. I must want to wait until you're going to find. Well, Bad, wait. wait uh... Oh well. So I wear this suit for another four years. <laughs> well, dear, did you and Babs have a nice conversation? Mm, some conversation. Three minutes. It cost me thirty bucks. <laughs> I could have phoned long distance for that dog. Well, I don't know anybody who lives further than Glendale. And... <laughs> hey, wait. I do know someone. Junior. I could have phoned Junior. I, I still can. Oh, if I could only hear his little voice. Well, go ahead. It only costs a dollar. Yeah, I could... 
No, 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 I, I can't. Gillis might find out. Well, what's Gillis got to do with it? Well, we, we sort of agreed that we teach those boys a lesson. Show them we don't miss them. Oh, that's ridiculous. Never mind, Gillis. Go on, phone. No, we made a pact. We shook hands on it. We... There's only one way out. I'll be a diplomat. I'll break the pact. We got to keep this from Gillis. Well, go on. Dial the operator. First, I want to make sure that Gillis ain't listening in on the party line. Ever since we both got the same party line, he's always listening. Uh, okay, the coast is clear. This is long distance. I, I, I want to put in a person-to-person call to Junior Rally at Camp High Point in Lake Arrowhead. I am sorry. There's some trouble with the line in Lake Arrowhead. There'll be a two-hour delay. Two hours, uh, six o'clock. Uh, oh, okay. Call me back when you get them. Gladstone 9989J. <laughs> Poor Gillis. <laughs> he must be suffering. What is his own fault? He just ain't smart enough to think of a double cross like this. <laughs> <laughs> It's no use. I can't stand it no more. Living in an empty house with nobody but my wife. <laughs> I don't care what I told Riley. This is long distance. Oh, oh, I want to talk person to person to Egbert Gillis in person. Camp High Point, Lake Arrowhead. Sorry, sir. There will be a two-hour delay. Oh, okay. Call me back. Gladstone 9989K. <laughs> I feel better already. <laughs> Poor Riley. <laughs> well, what he don't know won't hurt me. <laughs> oh, you out here, Riley? Oh, 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 oh Gillis. Uh, yeah, I'm just taking a nose full of fresh air. <laughs> nice night, Gillis. Uh, why don't you go for a long walk? Huh? No, I think I'll hang around the house here. Yeah? Yeah. Why don't you go for a long walk? No, no, no. I, I, I no. I, I think I'll hang around here too. Oh. Well, Riley, how goes it? Uh, you missing Junior? Junior? Oh, my wife's son. <laughs> no. <laughs> you uh, missing Egbert? No. Why should I miss him? We agreed to put them out of our minds, didn't we? Smartest thing we ever did. Just goes to show what willpower can do. Sure. Uh, what time is it, Ryan? Two and a half minutes to six. Oh. What time you got, Billy? Uh, two and a half minutes to six. Uh, yeah, there's nothing like willpower, Ryan. Yeah. Uh, what time is it now, Gillis? Uh, two minutes to six. What time you got? Two minutes to six. What's the matter, Gillis? Your ears are quivering. Oh, nothing, nothing. Uh, excuse, uh, excuse me, excuse me. I, just remember, I got, I got to go. go. See you later. Oh, this is my phone. Thank heaven. Hello? On your call to Lake Arrowhead, I am trying to locate your party. Hold on, please. Oh, okay, I'll hold on. Hello? Hello? Hello, is that you, pal? Yeah, yeah, this is me. Is that you, pal? Oh, gee, your voice sounds so different. It sounds hoarse. Yours is different, too. I can hardly recognize it. Well, I, I, I think we got a bad connection. Do you miss me, pal? I'll say I do. <laughs> do you miss me? Every minute. I'm so lonesome. And you love me? Love you. Here's a kiss. <laughs> and here's one for you. <laughs> Are you having fun? Well, what did you do today? Oh, nothing much. I've been hanging around with that big Jake Riley. Yeah, he's a... <laughs> Gillis Gillis, it's you Riley, it's you You double-crosser You put in a call for your junior Oh, yeah, you're a double-crosser, too You put in a call for your Egbert Yeah, but you're the worst, Mr. Riley You put in your call first <laughs> I'll get even with that phone company I'm having that phone taken out
says Riley. When Junior Riley and Egbert Gillis went off to a mountain camp for a week's holiday, their fathers felt their sons had deserted them. So, very pert, Riley and Gillis swore they'd teach the boys a lesson and ignore them. But the parental instinct was too strong and each caught the other trying to put in a long-distance call to the camp. So all right, Riley, let's face it. So we both made a mistake. We broke under the stream and cracked the pack. No, oh, wait, Gillis. No, we, we, we didn't really crack the pack. Because we didn't actually talk to the boys. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. The pack ain't cracked. It's still intact. Yeah, but, but from now on, we got to be stronger than ever. For the sake of our boys, we're keeping the pack. Of course, there's one way to make sure. What do you mean? Well, we're both members in good standing of the BPLA. Well, yeah, but what's this got to do with the Brooklyn Patriots of Los Angeles? <laughs> We are taking the supreme oath of everlasting brotherly trust. No. No, not that. Not the supreme oath. The Constitution says you're only supposed to take that in times of disaster. Like earthquakes, floods, epidemics, and marriage. (laughs) Yeah, but when a boy don't love his father, that's a disaster. Come on, the oath. Shake. Shake. Fingers Fingers to fingers, toes to toes. If I break this pack, break my nose. Oh, Riley, we're home. I guess Daddy's out. Well, that's funny. He said he's staying in tonight. Just listen to that, Mother. I wish that landlord would put in a new hot water boiler. <laughs> That's not the boiler. It's your father snoring. He must be in the living room. Yes. There he is on the couch. (laughs) Just listen to him. Mother, now I know what to get you for your birthday. (laughs) Earplugs. He's talking to sleep. (laughs) Well, what's he saying? Well, I I can't quite make it out. Oh, he's dreaming about you, Mother. He better be. I love you. When I come home from work, my first thought is of you. He does mean you, Mother. Oh, this sweet thing. Don't ever leave me. I can't live without you. Darling, I'll wake him up with a kiss. Oh, thank you, Junior. I tell you, oh, oh, it's you. Where's Junior? Where's your... Oh, oh, it's only a dream. I forgot he's gone. Now listen, Riley. It's all right to love your son, but you're overdoing it. Junior goes away for a few days and you act like the world's ended. But he didn't even write. Well, kids, Junior's age never write. You know that, Daddy. There's nothing to worry about. The scoutmaster at the camp takes good care of the boys. Besides, if anything was wrong, they'd let us know. I know all that. Well, then, what are you so gloomy about? I miss him. (laughs) 
my own son ignores me. Some son. He don't write, he don't phone. As far as he's concerned, I ain't even alive. According to my record, he's wrong. <laughs> Who's that? It is I, Digby O'Dell, the friendly undertaker. <laughs> Oh, I didn't see you, Digger. Greetings, Riley. Going my way. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I'm just strolling around while I walk. You know, Digger, life's full of disappointments. A man tries to be a nice guy, be a friend and a pal. Then in the end, someone lets him down. Please, let's not talk shop. <laughs> I feel terrible, Digger. It's my boy, Junior. Ah, yes. Boys are a problem. Yesterday, a gang of young ruffians stole a sign from a travel bureau and hung it on the door of my business establishment. Oh, I was furious. Oh, why? What, what, what did the sign say? Going south, let us arrange your trip. <laughs> But what's your problem, Riley? Well, my junior went away camping three days ago, and since I saw him off, I ain't even heard from him. Oh, cheer up, Riley. I've seen lots of people off, but I never heard from them. <laughs> but I don't mind. As long as I know where they are, I'm satisfied. <laughs> oh, but I miss him so much. I don't blame you. Junior is a fine lad, but personable... And Precocia. I adore Julia. He's okay. <laughs> Riley, why not go up to camp and see Junior? I can't. Gillis and me made a solemn promise to ignore our boys, to teach them a lesson for desertness. And I always keep my word. Besides, Gillis is watching me like a hawk. <laughs> but suppose Babs wanted to see her little brother. Naturally, you'd have to chaperone her on the trip. Yeah, yeah and then if Gillis found... Hey, that's a great idea. We leave first thing in the morning. Digger, you're a real pal. Someday I'll do something for you. I'm sure you will. <laughs> well, here you go. I'd better be doubling off. <laughs> Hurry up, Babs. I, I want to reach the camp before it gets dark. Oh, Come on, I'm Babs. exhausted. I still don't see why you had to drag me along. I keep telling you, Babs, if Gillis finds out, you're my alibi. Well, let's go on. Yeah, now remember, keep close to me. There's wild animals around here. Wild animals? Well, sure, wolves, bears, coyotes. Bears? Now, don't be afraid. A bear should jump out at you from the bush and start running. And don't worry, I'll be right in front of you. Now. <laughs> Come on, let's go. Gee, I can hardly wait to see Junior. Oh, I think I see the camp, Daddy. Where, where, where? There, there, you can see it through the tree. Oh, yeah, that's it. Hurry up. Uh, wait, Daddy. That's all. Listen, there's something in those bushes. Uh, 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 it's some kind of an animal. Maybe it's a bear. A bear? Oh, it's coming toward us. It's looking at us. I see its hairy face. It's got long fangs and beady red eyes. Why, Mr. Gillis! <laughs> Why, Sam! Gillis, I'll never trust you again. The minute I turn my back, you follow me. Oh, Riley, what's the use? Admit we're lick. I, I, I can't stand it. After all, Egbert's my own fleshy blood. My only male son. <laughs> You're right, Gillis. Why fight nature? Them two boys of ours are drawing us towards them, just like a couple of maggots. <laughs> this has been the lonesomest week of my life since my honeymoon. Hey, look, there's the scoutmaster over there. Let's go ask him to get the boys. No, 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 wait a minute. Bed, you go get him and walk past this tree, and then we'll jump out and surprise him. Huh? All right, but you stay right there. Yeah, we, we won't... Uh, oh, oh, oh. Gee, Gillis, I hope we did the right thing in coming here. I hope so, too. Egbert and Junior might not like it. Yeah, they, they might resent us. Maybe we'd better go home. No, no, we come this far, let's stick it up. Yeah, okay. Daddy! Here comes Bed. Oh, Daddy, guess what? Well, where's Junior? They're gone. Oh, uh huh? They went home. They ran away this morning. Home? They ran away home? Oh, it's a cat's apostrophe. <laughs> no. No, it ain't. Don't you see, Gillis? They went home because they couldn't stand being away from their father. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they missed us. They love us. They love us. Oh, and we were worried. Oh, this is the biggest thrill 
of my life. Oh, here's the note they left. Leslie, let's see what the little darlings say. We're going home. Yeah. We can't stand it anymore. We miss our mothers. <laughs> their mothers? They love their mothers? What a revolting development this is. <laughs> Peg, I'm home. Is Junior here yet? Oh, yes, he's sound asleep. Well, did he tell you why he left the camp? Well, yes, he did, Yeah, but... I, I guess he loves you more than he loves me. Oh, no, Riley, don't be silly. Oh, I, I don't mind. That's life. You find it in every family. Anyway, it works out even in the end. The boy loves the mother the most, and the girl loves the father the least. <laughs> 